the Premier Lacrosse League is getting ready to embark on what is what it's calling its championship series, a two-week tournament to decide its 2020 champion, with all games being played in Salt Lake City, Utah. Players are reporting to Utah on Sunday, and that will lead up to group play games starting on July 25th, where each team will play four games throughout August 2nd. Five of the seven PLL teams will make the elimination round, with the number one seed getting a bye to the semifinals. The championship game is set for Sunday, August 9th. One of the players you'll see is Archer's long pole, Scott Ratliff. He scored five goals, cost 14 turnovers, and had 39 ground balls last season. The two-time All-American and 2012 national champion with Loyola also won the league's Humanitarian of the Year award. With more, here's Travis Eldridge. So we've got Scott joining us now. Uh, Scott, the excitement level for you now has to just be through the roof. Like, where are you at? Yeah, I'm, uh, I am excited. It's been it's been the longest off season of my life, like <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, but you know, at the same time, we were talking about it offline. It, the, the you know, there is just a little bit of an air of uncertainty with with COVID and with the testing and. You know, the PLL has done uh, an incredible job of preparing us for that and setting kind of protocols. But I think the like full wave of excitement will hit once I'm on the field and practicing and, and in the bubble. Hey, I mean, how do you balance that? Because obviously there are concerns no matter how much you want to play about making sure that everyone's also healthy. Like, how do you balance the excitement of knowing like all you want to do is get back on the field with also those those other concerns that are probably in the back of everybody's mind? Yeah, I think you just focus on what you can control. You know, I, I mentioned, I think we all feel pretty good about the the program that the PLL has put together. Um, you know, it's really comprehensive as far as kind of looking out for for our safety and even just comparing it across with, with what other leagues have done. Um, you know, I think it's one of the best we've seen. So from that standpoint, I, I've got a lot of trust in them and, and the medical team to kind of keep us safe and keep us healthy. Um, but obviously there is the, the unknown of, of you know, our guys going to pass tests and things like that. So I, I think for myself, it's just taking it one day at a time and, and staying focused on what I can control. And of course, um, you know, visualizing, imagining this thing going through so that when we do get there and, and we start playing, uh, we're ready to go. You mentioned the length, the off season, you even started writing some poetry. Is that the first you've written a poetry? Is this something like you picked up? <laughs> no, you know, I've, I've, I've always liked to write. And that's something I've been doing the last probably five or six years is, as I've traveled and, and had some downtime and, and things like that. So, um, you know, they reached out to me, I guess a few of the people on staff at the PLL know that, that that's a hobby of mine. And, and so they reached out and asked if I would throw something together for a, for a hype video. So, and then, you know, their, their video team as always did a, a really good job of, of making me look good. Yeah. Check it out on, on Instagram and on social media. It's uh, it's on the archers pages. It's pretty good. Let's talk about this Archers team because I remember going into last year and I looked at the offense that you guys had with yourself and it just felt like it was all going to work right away. And it didn't quite gel exactly how you guys wanted. You lost a lot of one goal games and it ended probably more disappointingly than, than you thought last year was going to end. You had Grant Ament into the mix along with some other good pieces. How do you feel about this team? Yeah, I mean, I feel really confident. You know, the the margin for error is, is really small, and that's kind of an old story in pro lacrosse. It's, it's always been like that. Um, you know, I, I was really happy, honestly, with how last season went. I think not just us, but everybody. You, you Your first season playing together, you, there's going to be some time to kind of feel it out and figure out the pace and the style that really works for you. And I, and I felt like we really found that um, at the end of the season, and we were playing our best lacrosse. And obviously, you know, we lost to a, a really good team in the playoffs, and um, you know, having Tom go down was, was a difficult situation in that game. Um, but then we were able to kind of rally and, and win two more games after that um, and, and end our season on a really high note. So I, I'm as confident as I've ever been going into a season, but also recognizing that that's every team and, and every team's extremely talented and it's going to be one goal games again. Um, and so hopefully we can we can come out on, on top on a few of those this year. When you talk to Marcus and Will about having a chance to play on play with Grant, like how big is their smile? Is it like up here on either side? Like how excited are they? Yeah, I mean they're they're really excited. I think we all are. I mean, you, you know, he's a he's a, a generational talent. Um, but at the same time, I mean, Christian Cuccinello is pretty freaking good too, and, yeah. and so is Kevin Rice. And and so while we are all super excited about Grant and really believe that he's going to add something to our offense and to our team and, and having gotten to know him, I mean, he's, 
he wants it. You know, he wants to be great in this league, and he's humble and he's hardworking. Um, I, I think he's going to fit in culturally perfect, and he's got two really good mentors on either side of him with with Marcus and Will. Um, but he's also a rookie, and we've all been there before. And, and I think that it's important that um, you know we all do our part to to play a team game and to not put it on the attack line. I think last year we struggled a little bit relying too heavily on too few of guys, um, especially on the offensive end. So um, the expectations are high and, and really, really confident in, in Grant's ability and everybody's excited to play with them. But, um, you know, we realize that we all got to be at our best when we show up if, if we're going to be able to pull this thing out. And I think the whip snake showed that last year, just kind of being the most complete team top to bottom uh, is the only way you're going to be able to win this thing. So it's no secret that it usually takes some time with the limited practice time, whatever, for a professional lacrosse team to gel across the season. You guys don't have time this year. It's a sprint to the finish in terms of competing in this two-week tournament. How do you gel and become successful this year with the limited amount of time? Yeah, you know, again, it's it's something that we're used to just with the, the nature of, of pro lacrosse. It's always kind of been this way. And, and now having a season under our belt, and, you know, we did lose some pieces and obviously adding Grant, adding Eli Gobrecht on defense and and, uh, you know, Mazzoni in the midfield. Like, there's a few few pieces we need to work in, but uh, a large part of kind of the strength of our team, especially, you know, in the defensive midfield with with Tyler and Dominique and, and Mark McNeil coming back and, and with Matt and Curtis down low and the goalies and the face-offs, I mean, we feel like we've got a lot of continuity returning. Um, so, so really, the you know, this first week of practice will just be getting those new guys up to speed, kind of getting on the same page. But I, I think as a team, we're going to try to not do things too differently. Like I said, we we were rolling at the end of last year. We felt like we were playing really well. Um, so I think our goal will be to kind of pick up where we left off and, and mix in a few new pieces that can uh, push us over the top. So finally, I'll leave you here in this because you're hopefully getting ready to fly out this weekend. What's the one thing you need to bring into the PLL bubble? Uh, positive attitude, baby. It's not it's it's not going to be perfect and, and circumstances aren't going to be ideal. So just going in there ready to kind of deal with uh, with anything else. There's no no material objects needed. I think my roommates, Adam Gittleman, I, I know he's bringing lava lamps and, and <laughs> incense and all sorts of things to vibe out our room. So it'll be uh, it'll be a happy place to stay. And uh, I'm honestly just going to, you know, bring my gear and, and, and my excited attitude. And I think we'll be ready to go. It'll be very zen with Scott and Adam. Uh, hey, Scott, we appreciate the time. Uh, good luck as you, you head out there. We can't wait to see you guys back in action. Thanks, man. Yes, appreciate you. Great to see you.